Hey everybody, this is Rafi from Zerve, and I got a great video for you. This one is on the foundation button. So you're gonna use this component quite a bit. Uh, it's one of the most used components outside of the grid itself. So it's definitely good to know the basics of how to use the foundation buttons. So instead of going through the documentation, I'm gonna jump into an example and just show you some of the different uh, use cases for buttons. So I have this uh, simple call out here. Um, so it's just a container with some padding and I'm gonna add some buttons to this. So buttons can be made with anchor tags or they can also be made with the button tag. Now the reason you would use one over the other is the use case for the button. Now are we uh, linking off to another page or another website, or are we creating an action on the page? So we'll use an anchor tag if we're linking off to another location or another page. So anchor tag with a class of button, and that's gonna create the button. So we're gonna need some text in there, so uh, let's do um, read more. So this could be just a link to like a blog post or, or another website or another page. Um, and that's how you create a basic uh, anchor tag button. Now, if we were kinda gonna create actions on the page, um, so let's say this is uh, something that could be uh, saved or deleted. So let's go ahead and use the button tag instead. Now when we use the button tag, we want to use the type attribute as well. So button type button. This is good for accessibility. It really uh, describes that this component um, creates an action. And so we're gonna do uh, save on this one. Now it doesn't look like a button just yet as you can see over here on the right because we actually need to add the class of button. And so once we add the class of button, you'll see that it looks like a button. So the button has you know, some padding and a font size and, and uh, this uh, style here. So if we're gonna create another button, let's do this one. Let's call this one um, delete. Okay, so this button is going to save. This button is going to delete. Um, and as you can see here, they uh, create that style just using the button class. So these are actions on the page, that's why we're using the button tag. And it's important to use the button type, or the uh, type equals button attribute. All right, so now from here, we could do quite a few modifier classes. So if we hop back over to the docs, what can we do with these buttons? Well we can size them. So let's take a look at sizing the buttons in some different configurations. Okay, so back to our example, we have our call out with the two buttons here. And in the class, uh, next to the class of button, we're going to add tiny. Now these classes can be in any order, so that doesn't matter. And now we made one of them tinier than the other, but we probably want both of them to be tiny. So if we do that, then you see they shrink down. So it's just gonna change the uh, font size. The interesting thing about the sizing of buttons is they are controlled by the font size. So if you change the font size of the button, it'll actually scale up the entire button, bigger and smaller. Uh, that's because the padding is in M's. So that's actually a really handy thing to, to note. So let's go ahead and use a different class. So we also have small available. Right, and so now you can see the difference. There's the small buttons. If we don't have any sizing class, obviously uh, they're going to be the default size, which is this. And then we also have uh, large. So we can make the buttons really big. So maybe if this was a hero or something like that, that might be appropriate there. So uh, really fast prototyping classes to change the sizing of your buttons. Now there's one more, it's called expanded. And you'll see this class used uh, around foundation quite a bit. So the expanded class basically creates 
at the makes the button 100% width of the container it's in. So right now it's in a uh, you know a wider container that's almost the width of the entire screen. So it's going to be uh, the the entire width that it could take up inside that container. If we put the button into a smaller container, then it's just going to take up that size. So that's a really handy class as well if we want this button to be full width. So we're going to remove those classes and let's take a look at some more things that we could do with the buttons. So if we hop back over here, we can also do coloring classes with the buttons. Now this is really important, especially in this case, because it uses Foundation's color palette, which gives you a range of state colors. So state colors are important to show, you know, the, the state or uh, the purpose of a specific button. So in this case, we could chain on some different classes. Now, if you leave it default, that's going to be the primary color. So in by default, the primary color in foundation is this blue color. And you can see that there's a little bit of a hover effect. It darkens when you hover over it. So if we were to change that, so this is a save button. So let's make it the success color. So success is one of the color classes in foundation. It's going to make this button green. Um, now you could change this in your CSS or if you're using the SAS version in the settings file, there's a color palette um, settings map where you can change these. And then we're going to make delete the alert color. So this is um, now just adding some purpose using color. So uh, I wouldn't rely on color um, to determine the purpose of a button um, by itself. So the text inside should be very descriptive. So maybe delete is not descriptive enough. So delete message uh, and then save message. So these are more descriptive um, text inside the buttons. So not only does that tell the user obviously what's happening, but if somebody's visually impaired and they're using a screen reader uh, to navigate your site, when they arrive on these buttons, it's more clear what the buttons are doing. And I'll touch more on accessibility in just a moment as well. So another thing that we could do uh, along with these color classes is also make these buttons hollow. So we could chain another class on here, the hollow class. So let's say I want one or maybe both of these buttons to have the hollow style. So that means they don't have a background, but they do have a border. And now the text is the color of that border. So it's still using those um, coloring classes that we have in foundation. Uh, but now you can actually make them, you know, hollow. So that's a really quick, easy way to make those like ghost buttons or, or in, in our case, we call them hollow buttons here. We can also make a button disabled. So let's take this first button for example. So let's get rid of these hollow classes. Okay, let's make the success button disabled. Okay, so I'm going to add a disabled class to the button and you can see that it changes the style. Um, and now when you hover over it, it has the not allowed cursor uh, style. So now that we've added the disabled class, we could also add the attribute that makes this disabled. So for a button, that is the disabled attribute. So once we do that, now this is effectively a disabled button. Uh, the browser will consider it disabled and, and not allow a click. So you do need um, the style is one thing. So the disabled class is the style, but the disabled attribute effectively makes that button disabled. Now you might use this for cases where you'll have like an input, right? And you don't want to allow somebody to save a message until they actually put a message in there. And then at that point you would remove the disabled class and the disabled attribute because now there is uh, text inside the form and then they can submit or save it. So that would be, one specific use case for the uh, disabled in the buttons. Now, if we were doing this on an anchor tag, it'd be a little different. So 
Let's go ahead and make an anchor tag button. So let's do class of button. And we're gonna make this one, uh, so let's just call it disabled. Okay, so we're gonna make this a class of disabled. And the only difference here is now we're going to use aria disabled as the attribute. So aria is an accessibility attribute, accessibility specific, and it could either describe the component better or it can uh, change the functionality. So this is used on an anchor tag to consider it disabled. And again, we get the same style. So if it's a primary color, it's, it's lightened up to this light blue. And then uh, you, when you hover over it, you get the not allowed uh, cursor. This is for people that might have trouble seeing the screen very well. So it's very obvious that this one is disabled. So speaking of accessibility, uh, there might be instances where you don't have a chance to put really descriptive text inside of a button. So let's make another example here where that might happen. So we're going to uh, use a button tag here and we're going to give it type equals button, of course. And then from here, we're going to put an icon font inside. So let's go ahead and use an icon font, or you, this could be an image. Um, but right now this icon font is not very descriptive and uh, neither would an image be unless you had a really good alt tag in there. So let's add uh, our class of button, of course. Oh, and let's spell class right, there we go, button. Okay, cool. So. Now we have our button. This maybe like opens a settings dropdown or something like that. So it doesn't have any text to describe it. So when a user is landing on this that is visually impaired, they're using a screen reader, um, how can they know what, how to describe this? So we just need to add a little bit of descriptive text in here and have it visibly hidden um, visually hidden, but also have it available to a screen reader. So if we hop back over to the documentation, there's this accessibility section here. And we can add this uh, span with a class of show for SR, that's show for screen reader. So just as it sounds, this would actually show the, the text inside to a screen reader and allow it to call it out. So we'll just add that within our button. And uh, now that we're nesting things, let's just go ahead and clean up that uh, spacing there. Okay, great. Oop, there we go. So we have our button here, and now you can see that it has a span of show for screen reader. Instead of close, let's say um, open settings. Okay, so. Now it's really descriptive when the screen reader uh, lands on this particular button that it's going to read open settings uh, out to the person. So they actually know what this thing does. So that's really helpful. The other thing too, is if you're using imagery in a button, the imagery is not valuable to somebody who can't see it. So the aria hidden attribute um, comes in handy here. So aria hidden equals true. That's gonna hide it from the screen reader. So the screen reader will ignore this part of the button, the visual element, and it's going to read off the actual functionality, which is open settings. So that's how you can make your buttons more accessible, especially if there's not descriptive text inside. And one more thing too, uh, based on functionality is if we have a dropdown created out of a button, we can make that happen as well. So let's go ahead and change and let's let's add another button in here. So I'm going to copy this one. I'm going to make it a drop down. So it is a button, uh, but we don't want the alert class. Let's just leave it uh, the primary class or primary style without adding an extra class. Um, but let's add the drop down class to it. 
So the drop down class is a specific style and foundation to create a drop down button. And so chaining these two classes together will now add this arrow um, and it's nicely positioned off to the right. So that's pretty cool, uh, easy way to set up a uh, drop down style for a button. Now this is just a style. If you want to use the functionality of a drop down, then you can hop over to the drop down component in foundation. Uh, which is found in containers and then drop down. So you can click over to that and then add your drop down to it. But if you want the style of a drop down button, uh, it's created with the drop down class. Now, of course, you can chain all your other classes on here. So if we want this to be the warning color and we want it to be expanded, you know, we could do that um, and it still works the same way. And now I want to talk about styling the button components. So there's quite a few classes available to style the components, but if you want to write your own CSS, it's really easy to do. One thing that you might do is add a radius to these buttons. So there's no class in foundation to create the radius. Uh, that's because writing a border radius is one uh, line of code. So it really saves weight in the framework. So Let's go ahead and target button, and then we can add a border radius. So border radius, there we go. So let's say we want it to be five pixels and we'll close that. So there we go. We just added a simple border radius to these buttons. And if we want that to be bigger, we can make that 15 pixels. If we want it to be rounded, then like 5,000 pixels is the number there. So you can make those like pill style buttons. Now, if we wanted to make this a radius class, we could definitely do that by just doing something like this, uh, button dot radius, uh, and then we can set our radius there. So that way, if we add the radius class onto the button individually, let's say we don't want all of our buttons to have a radius, but some of them, then you could definitely do it that way as well. Now, speaking of styling, there's all kinds of settings in the settings file if you're using the SAS version of foundation. So let's search for button. All right. so. If we go down to button, uh, you can see that there's all kinds of settings here that you could change for buttons. So you could adjust the button padding. Uh, and again, it's in M's. And that way, if you change the font size, the padding will also scale up the entire size of the button. So that's pretty handy to know. And then there's button margin. So this is setting a bottom margin. Um, global margin is one rem. So it's setting one rem of bottom margin. And there's all kinds of other things. So you could change the hover effect. You could change the button sizes um, with this button size map and so on and so forth. All kinds of different settings in the settings file of foundation make it really easy for you to change your buttons up and make them look the way that you want. So definitely have lots of options with these buttons and there's all kinds of modifications you can do to buttons. Uh, so you'll find them in the documentations here, all the things that I just talked about. If you want to learn about all the components in Foundation, we teach that in our Intro to Foundation class. I'll put the link below. It is the fastest way to learn Foundation. And this is Rafi from the Foundation team signing off. Thanks for watching.